section one part nine of the itinerary of john leland in or about the years fifteen thirty five to fifteen forty three edited by lucy toolman volume five this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for further information or to volunteer please visit LibriVox.org. Commentaria Anglia John of St. Helens, so called because he dwelt in St. Helens Parish in Abingdon, was the first beginner and maker of the great bridge of stone over Isis at Abingdon. Afore his time it was a ferry. The making of this bridge was a great hindrance to the town of Wallingford, whither the trade was of them that came out of Gloucestershire, but now they pass by Abingdon. This John de St. Helen lived about the beginning of the reign of Henry the Sixth. This John builded the fair hospital by St. Helen's in Abingdon, and gave fifty lee lands by year to the maintenance of it and the bridge. The bridge of arch stone at Dorchester is but a new thing to speak of, and there was a ferry at high waters over Thames, and the bridge of Abingdon seemeth to have been the missing words. Gulda Romara, Earl of Lincoln, was lord and owner of Bullingbroke Castle in Lincolnshire. Since it was told me that there were two cantuaries in the parish church of Bullingbroke of the Romarus foundation lately suppressed. There is at St. Saviour's at Newborough in Yorkshire a great painting or table in the prior or abbot's chamber yet standing of all the whole descent and lineage of the Mowbrays. Master Dr. Belaziz may send for a copy of it Master Stapleton of London, brother-in-law to Sir Thomas Wharton, told me that the common opinion of the people about Penrith is that Darraby, Earl of Westmoreland, made much of the castle that now standeth at Penrith. He told me also that Darraby's armies were and be in diverse parts of the dungeon in the castle of Caerlewes, whereupon he conjectureth that it was re-edified by him. The castle of Shrobsbury is set so that it is in the very place where the town is not defended with seven, else the town were totally environed with water. Dartington, the fair and goodly lordship by Totnes in Devonshire, was the lord of Audleys, sensed by a tainter, the Duke of Exeter, named Holland, that caused his whole household there to drink wine brought out of France. He was Admiral of England, and Sir Baldwin Fulfurt, a knight of the sepulchre was his under-admiral. Courtney, Marquess of Exeter, had a late this Dartington. East Horsley, a mile from West Horsley, in Southery, longed to the Bishop of Exeter, where is a pretty little manor-place. Lacey, Bishop of Exeter, in Henry V and VI days, lay sometime at this house. This Lacey was Dean of Henry V Chapel at the Battle of Agincourt. This Lacey made the hall of Exeter Palace in London. Talbot, Earl of Shrobsbury, and his son Lord Lyle slain in France. This Earl's bones were brought out of Normandy to Whitchurch in Shropshire. Talbot, next Earl to him slain at Northampton Field, taking King Henry the Sixth part. This Earl had five sons. John, that had to wife the daughter of the Duke of Buckingham, slain at Northampton, died Earl of Shrobsbury, passing in journey at Coventry. James, that died of strips taken at Northampton Field, but he came first to Chiffonol in Shropshire, a two miles from Tonge, where the Earls of Shrobsbury had a manor place of timber and a park. George, Earl of Shrobsbury, was born at Chiffonol. Gilbert, the third son knight of the Garter, and deputy of Calais in Henry the Seventh days, and lieth buried at Whitchurch, and there is a chantry made by him. He was ambassador to Rome with Abbot Beer of Glastonbury for King Henry the Seventh. This Gilbert was sore wounded at Bosworth, taking King Henry the Seventh part. Sir Christopher, person of Whitchurch, was the fourth. Sir Humphrey Talbot Knight was the fifth. He used Calais, and sister to the aforesaid fifth brethren by the earl, was married to Sir Henry Verney of Thonge, where she is buried in the college with her husband. Margaret, daughter to the earl and sister to the aforesaid five brethren, was wife to Chawort, a gentleman of Derbyshire. 
John Earl of Shrobsbury had two sons, George and Thomas. Thomas died without issue. George Earl had to wife the daughter of the Lord Hastings that was beheaded in the tower and had diverse men and women children. The late Earl of Cumberland married Margaret George's daughter and another was married to the last Earl of Northumberland. The Lord Dacres married another. Francis, now Earl of Shrobsbury. The old Lord Hastings that was beheaded in the town had a son, Lord Hastings, that had to wife the daughter and heir of the Lord Hungerford. The old Lord Hastings also had a son called Richard, a knight that married the Lady Savile. William also was son to the old Lord Hastings. The old Lord Hastings had also a daughter that was wife to George Earl of Shrewsbury. Hastings, Lord Hastings, the old Lord Hastings' son and heir, had by her Lord Hastings, now Earl of Huntingdon. He had also a daughter, wife to the Earl of Derby, mother to the Earl of Derby now living. Hastings, Earl of Huntingdon, had to wife Anne, daughter of the Duke of Buckingham, beheaded at Sarsbury. The other daughter of this Duke of Buckingham was the first wife to the Lord Fitzwalter. Hastings, son and heir to the Earl of Huntingdon, married the late Lord Montacute's daughter. The Lord Stafford married the Lord Montacute's sister. The Duke of York's son, called Edward, never took greater name at the beginning of his wars against King Henry the Sixth, but the name of the Earl of March until that one pa brought him a fifteen hundred men to go with him to, missing words, Field, and proclaimed him as he went for king. Master Field told me that there runneth a mighty long ditch from, missing words, towards Litchip Malatravers in Dorsetshire. I saw in a roll of the high lordships of the Duke of York at Master Garters, these names following, Cunsborough Castle, Clifford Castle, the Lordship of the Fair Maid of Kent. Master Garter told me that Quimborough Castle in Kent was of this hold, but he showed me not how or who should be this Fair Maid of Kent. There is a great hill or ridge that stretcheth in length from Glastonbury on to within two miles of Bridgewater, and is the very highway to pass from the one from the other of them. This balk or hill is of breadth to speak of, and of each side of it lieth low march ground. Brent March, going from Glastonbury, lieth on the right hand, and, missing words, marches on the left hand. The houses of the order called Sauinia Census, otherwise Fratres Grisse, were after reduced onto the order called Cistercensis. Stratford in Essex was of this order by the foundation of Montfichet. This house first set among the low marshes was after with sore floods defaced and removed to a cell or grange longing to it called Burgerstead in Essex a mile or more from Villarica. These monks remained at Burgstead until entreat was made that they might have some help otherwise. Then one of the Richards, kings of England took the ground and abbey of Stratford into his protection and re-edifying it brought the foresaid monks again to Stratford, where among the marches they re-inhabited. One Agatha, daughter and heir to the Lord Tresbore, had two husbands. Golda Albaneo was the one. She was buried in the priory of Newstead by Stamford. The Lord Tresbore gave in his arms three bolts. Stoke Daubeny is in Northamptonshire, hard by Rockingham Forest, a two miles from Pipwell Abbey. The northern men brent Mitch of Stormford town. It was not since fully re-edified. Stormford was privileged, but in King Edward's days for a borough, as concerning a place in the Parliament House. Yet it was a borough town in King Edgar's days, and then and since it hath all the way long to the crown. There were seven principal towers or wards in the walls of Stormford, to each of the which were certain freeholders in the town allotted to watch and ward in time of need. Whereas I writ in the choirs of Cornwall, that for we was called the old Cornish, Cowath, make it Fowath. The chief occasion and the original by likelihood of the manifold pools and lakes in Chestershire, 
was by digging of marl for fattening the barren ground there to bear good corn, to the which pits the fall of the waters thereabout and springs hath resorted, and besides the ground there being so deeply diked, there may be many springs rising naturally in them. There be tokens in Chestershire of diverse salt pits beside them that be commonly now used, as by Cumbermere in a wood, and at the dirt which, a late a new pit beside the old decayed, and at Aldrassey, a poor village of a six houses, a four mile from Malpace in the way almost to Chester, much by west hath been a salt pit, but now decayed, as almost in time out of mind. Such fir trees overthrown and covered with bog and march, as be in Chestershire, Lancastershire, and Shropshire, may be found in some places of the Isle of Oxholm. Termon is about a twenty-four miles in length, and twenty-one in breadth, yet the common voice maketh it almost equal in length and breadth. Lugershall, sometime a castle in Wiltshire, ten miles from Marlborough, and a four miles from Andover, almost in the way betwixt. The castle stood in a park, now clean down. There is of late times a pretty lodge made by the ruins of it, and longeth to the king. A cardinal, draper, and archbishop of Canterbury gave a one thousand marks or lead to the erecting of London Bridge. King John gave certain vacant places in London to build on for building and reparation of London Bridge. A mason, being master of the bridge house, builded a fundamentus, the chapel on London Bridge, a fundamentis proprius impensis. Buckingham, Aylesbury, five miles from Notley, is a good market town having one parish church and a house of grey friars. It standeth on a little brook and is a mile from Thames Stream. Wickham, Chilton Hills. From Henley in Oxfordshire to Wickham in Buckinghamshire and eight miles. From Wickham to Dunstable in Bedfordshire at eighteen miles. All this way goeth Chilton Hills, whereof many be well replenished with wood, and partly with corn, all the soil being a chalk clay. Rivers in Buckinghamshire, ooze or eyes. Another ooze or eyes, as of one principal arm, riseth about West Wickham, out of one of the Chilton Hills, and so cometh by Wickham the market town. The lesser arm is called Higdonbrook, and riseth also in one of Chilton Hills, a mile above Wickham. Both these streams meet at the west end of Wickham, and thence the whole bottom with one water goeth to Heden, and so to Oburn, where the Bishop of Lincoln hath a fair house, and thence a mile and more into the Thames. Market Towns in Bedfordshire Bedford Biggleswade, a two miles from Warden Abbey, a good market and two fairs. Shefford a three miles from Bedford, and a mile from Chicksand Priory. Luton, a very good market town for barley. Hamptel, Olneys, Potton, Oburn, Dunstable, Dunstable. Castles in Bedfordshire. The castle of Bedford hard by the town, now clean down. There is a place called Falksherber, again the castle. Betwixt King's Cross and the middle way to Newenham and the castle were found many bones of men buried. The castle of Hamtel, the Lord Fanope, a man of great fame in outward wars, and very rich, builded this house. Odell Castle, now nothing but strange ruins, longing to the Lord Bray. Odell Town is by the castle, and is as it were, an eight miles from Bedford, and by Harold Nunnery, about a mile off. This Odell was a barony. Castle Park, a mile from London Abbey, Priory, and Landon, is within a mile of Olney. This park longed to the Souches, but now lately sold to the Lord Mordant. Peraventure this London Castle. Rising Ho, hard by Castle Mill on Ouse, it longed to Warden Abbey, now to Mr. Gostawick. Adding greaves, where be tokens of ditches, where some fortress hath been by the Ouse River, a mile or two from Risingho. Isis, otherwise Ouse, Olney Water, Underwater. Market Towns in Worcestershire, 
Worcester on Severn, Evesham upon Avon River, twelve miles from Worcester, Bromsgrove, ten miles north from Worcester, Persore upon Avon, six miles from Worcester, Kidderminster upon Stour River, twelve miles toward northeast from Worcester. Bewdley, the sanctuary town, hath hard by it the king's manor of Tickley, standing on a hill. Castles in Worcestershire. Worcester. The ruins of Hanley Castle, seven miles from Worcester, lower of the farther ripe of seven. Aberley, otherwise Abbotsley, sometime longing to the Earl of Warwick. Hartsbury Castle longing to the Bishop of Worcester, set on a strong rock, seven miles from Worcester. Helmledge where the college is longing to the king. There standeth now but one tower, and that partly broken. As I went by I saw carts carrying stone thence to amend Persore Bridge, about a two miles off. It is set on the top of a hill, full of wood, and a townlet hard by, and under the root of the hill is the Vale of Evesham. Rivers in Worcestershire. Seven riseth in a hill called Plimlimon. So to Kersius, famous in name, but indeed a poor thoroughfare. From Mancliffe to Clandidlas, a good village, to Newton, and so runneth within a mile of Montgomery, to the Welsh Pole, and thence passeth within half a mile of Ponsbury College, to Shrobsbury, to Rexester, alias Roxeter, to Bridgenorth, to Worcester, to Tewkesbury, to Gloucester, etc., Avon, Arrow, Dowell's river at riseth, as I learned, in Clee Hill in Shropshire, and cometh by Clebury, a poor village, and cometh not far above, Bewdley into Severn. Forest and Chase in Worcestershire. Why a forest, whereof some part is set in Worcestershire, but the most part in Shropshire, and stretcheth up from Holt upon Severn, unto Bridge North. Bewdley is set in the marches of this forest, and stretcheth a two miles beyond, to a water called, missing words. Wire is more than twenty miles compass. Fakenham Forest, totally, as I hear say, is set in Worcestershire, and is of less compass than wire. The chase of Malvern is bigger than the other wire or Fakenham, and occupieth a great part of Malvern Hills. Great Malvern and Little also is set in the chase of Malvern. Malvern Chase, as I hear say, is in length in some place a twenty miles, but Malvern Chase doth not occupy all Malvern Hills. Wire is a six miles by north from Worcester. There be three salt springs whereof two be near together. The third is a quarter of a mile off. All these be made in the finest salt of England. Within a mile of Alcester is a Limes. The castle of Dudley is in Staffordshire, but hard by is Worcestershire. Sir Gilbert Talbot, knight, hath a goodly house by Bromsgrove Market, called Grafton. Pakington hath a very goodly new house of brick, called Hampton Court, a six miles off from Worcester, somewhat northward. Market towns in Warwickshire. Warwick, Coventry, Henley, I have it described. Monk Kirkby, I know the site of this. Alcester, Rugby, Tamworth upon Anchor, I have it described. Nuneaton, I have it described. Atherston, I have it described. Bremisham, in the way to Chesterwood, a twelve miles from Coventry, I have it described. Southam, a six miles from Warwick. Castles in Warwickshire. Warwick, Killingworth. Brondon, a five miles by north from Coventry, now desolated. Sometime, as I heard say, longing to the Lord Mortimer. Brinkelow, a five miles by east from Coventry, now desolated, longing sometime, as men say, to the Mortimers. Baggington Castle, now desolated, it longed to the Baggots, a two miles from Coventry. Ashley Castle. Rivers. Avon. Anchor. Sow, riseth near Hakesbury, three miles from Coventry northeast. Fluit per Sow Pargum by White Lee, et propist on the village in Tamam Labitur. Leam, coming out of Northamptonshire, it cometh by Granborough, Lemington, Marton, off Kirk Pargus, 
and at Edmund Coop Bridge into Avon. Coal flew Orator in Yardle Wood, Propy, King's Northton, and after that by Coles Hill he goeth into Tame. Blythe riseth in Warwickshire near Roughton by Bolshall, Hampton, Pakington, and then going betwixt Coles Hill and Maxstoke, near Shustock village into Tame. The length of Warwickshire be estimation from Rollerich stones by Chipping Northton to Tamworth, as to the limits of Oxfordshire and Staffordshire. Thus the length is about thirty-six miles. Watling Street towards Rugby is a limes upon Leicestershire. A mile above Bremicham is a limes upon Staffordshire. Market towns in Shropshire. Shrewsbury. Bridge North, a fourteen miles from Shrobsbury. Wellington, a seven miles from Shrobsbury toward London Way. Drayton upon Turn River, a twelve miles from Shrewsbury. A Blorheath, a mile above Drayton by north, was a field fought between King Edward's men and Henry the Sixth. The Earl of Salisbury and northern men on King Edward's part overcame the Lords Audsley, slain, and Dudley, wounded, with Queen Margaret, wife to Henry the Sixth, and Chestershire men lost in the field. She came Eccles Hall thither. Halls, Bishop of Chester, her chaplain, caused the Queen to lie there. Whitchurch, a fourteen or fifteen miles from Shrewsbury. Newport, upon a brook of a twelve or fourteen miles from Shrewsbury. Within a mile of Newport is a goodly large mere or pool. Ludlow, Peter Undergod, a gentleman longing to an English Prince of Wales, did build St. John's Hospital without gate of Ludlow, and after gave lands unto it. Bishop's Castle, a very celebrate market. Castles in Shropshire. Shrewsbury. Ridgenorth on Severn, fourteen miles from Shrewsbury, lower on the river. Coarse Castle, on a hill five miles from Shrewsbury, by south-west, longing to the Duke of Buckingham, now to the Lord Stafford. Montgomery, the King's Castle, in the Shire, but not Day, twelve miles from Shrewsbury. It was once a great walled town called Cairo Valdwin. Cherbury Hundred was annexed to Montgomery as a help to have men out of it for defence. Ludlow, twenty miles from Shrewsbury. Newport upon a brook, or more, fourteen miles by east from Shrewsbury. Whitchurch upon a brocket, a sixteen miles by west from Shrewsbury. Drayton upon Turn River, a fourteen miles from Shrewsbury. Wigmore Castle, a twenty miles from Shrewsbury, standing on a brookit some time almost dry. Whittington, a castle of the Lord Fitzwarren's, six miles from Shrewsbury, upward almost on seven, and by this goeth Offa's Ditch. Shrawardine, four miles from Shrewsbury, longing to the Earl of Arundel, two miles from Whittington, betwixt Shrewsbury and it. Red Castle by Whitchurch, a late the Lord Audley's, Eight miles plain north from Shrewsbury, now all ruinous. It hath been strong and hath decayed many a day. Middle Castle longing to the Lord of Derby, three miles from Shrewsbury, very ruinous. Morton Corbett in a marsh, four miles from Shrewsbury by north, longing to the Corbetts. Knocking Castle in Shropshire, now a ruinous thing, long to the Lord Lestrange, and now to the Earl of Derby. Chalton Castle on Turn, longing to the Lord Poise, six miles from Shrewsbury, and a mile from Turn Village. Turn is to say a lake or pool. Cawtham Castle upon Corf River at Undy at Corfsdale, fourteen miles from Shrewsbury by south. Acton Burnell was a goodly manor place or castle, four miles from Shrewsbury, where a parliament was kept in a great barn. It longed once to the Lord Lovell, then to the Duke of Norfolk, and now to Sir John Duddle. Burnell's daughter was married to the Lord Lovell, and thereby the Lovell's land increased, and after was made Viscount Lovell. Lovell had Acton Burnell. Some of these castles, though they be in Shropshire, yet they be not day, for they be privileged and use their own laws and courts, except the last statute let them. Oswestry Castle is now in Shropshire. Kensham Castle, clean down, 
It stood within a two miles of Ludlow on a hilltop. Holgate Castle, sometime longing to the Lord Lovell, standeth under the Clee Hills, hard by Corvesdale, a six miles from Ludlow. The Duke of Norfolk exchanged it for other lands with Mr. Dudley. Bramscroft, a very goodly place like a castle, longing to the Earl of Shrewsbury. It standeth in Clee Hills, or about them a, missing words, miles from Ludlow. Stokesy, longing sometime to the Ludlows, now to the Vernons, builded like a castle five miles out of Ludlow. Sir Richard Ludlow had two daughters. One was married to Humphrey Vernon, and the other to Thomas Vernon, brethren to the late Sir Henry Vernon of the Peak. The third son of Henry married one of Montgomery's heirs. Shepton Corbett Castle, a six or seven miles from Ludlow, almost in the way betwixt Ludlow and Bishop's Castle. Hopton Corbett a half way betwixt Bishop's Castle and Wigmore, and a three miles from Shepton. Bishop's Castle, well maintained, is set on a strong rock, but not very high. Abbeys and Priories in Shropshire. The Abbey of Shrobsbury. Alba Monasterium, by Albertbury, long since suppressed. Ombridge, Black Shannons in the way to London two miles beyond Wellington Market, and a two miles beyond Lincoln Abbey. Lincoln, or Lillis Hall. Brerewood, Priory of White Nuns lately suppressed in the very march of Shropshire toward Derbyshire. Bilvois, White Monks. Hormond, Black Shannons. Wenlock, Black Monks. Tong, a little thoroughfare betwixt Ulnerhampton and Newport, seven miles from Ulnerhampton. Five from Newport. It is in Shropshire. There is a college and warden with an almshouse of the ancient foundation of the Vernons of Haddon in the Peak. Many or almost all lie there that were famous of them since the foundation. There was an old castle of stone called Tong Castle. It standeth half a mile from the town on a bank under the which runneth the brook that cometh from Weston to Tong. Weston is two miles off and is in Staffordshire. Sir Henry Vernon, a late days, made the castle new, all of brick. Rivers in Shropshire. 7. Turn riseth near Mere Village in Staffordshire. It goeth by Drayton, Turnhill, Bestford, and Sleep Villages, and cometh into Seven at Atcham Village, a two miles from Shrewsbury. I heard otherwise that it came into Seven about Turnbridge. Corf rising in Corvesdale cometh into Team at Ludlow. Corvedale, plentiful of corn, stretcheth from about Wenlock to Ludlow. Ree, coming by Wenlock. Roden riseth in the lake of Cumbermere. After it it runneth by Whitchurch, a good market town, by Lee Village and Shawbury Village, and at Walcott into Turn. There be very great breams and other good fishes in Cumbermere. Oni cometh into team about Broomfield, a cell to Gloucester. Harmer Pole a mile from Shrobsbury. Team River entereth into the farther side of Seven, not far from Poick Mill, a mile and a half beneath Worcester. The site and commodities of the soil of Shropshire. There be found in Moorish and Mossy Ground a seven miles from Shrobsbury, and in other places of the Shire, firwood roots and also the whole trees hewn down in old time, but of whom or for what cause no man there can tell. They find them lying in the ground, sometime a foot or two deep, sometime a five or six foot deep. Many of them be of a great length and without twigs. In Brenning they smell well. Mortimer's Clebury in Shropshire, a village and a park by Wyre Forest, in the way betwixt Ludlow and Bewdley. Clee Hills be divided into three parts. The hills next to Wenlock be called the Brown Clee, and there be deer. St. Margaret's Clee toward Ludlow. Fetterston Clee betwixt the forest of Wyre where is a fair timber and Ludlow. Leadwick Brook springeth in Clee Hills and running a seven miles goeth into Team at Burford where is the house of the barony of Burford longing to Mr. Cornwale. Clee Hills begin a four miles from Tembury and stretch within a four miles of Wenlock so that by guess I count them in length an eight or ten miles. In these hills riseth Ree River, 
and at Newton Mills in Worcestershire, a three miles beneath Tembury, cometh into Tame. The limits of Shropshire. Blakemere, a very large park nigh to Whitchurch, is, as I have heard say, in some part a limes betwixt Shropshire and Chestershire. In the park is a fair manor place. Monkbridge, a mile beneath Tembury, is, as I there heard say, a limes to Worcestershire, Shropshire and Hertfordshire. Langfell Dale, Stretton's Dale. Sir Richard Mannering, chief of that name, dwelleth a three miles by east from Price Village at a village called Heightfeld, having a park and great plenty of wood about him. Sandford dwelleth at Sandford, where is only his place and a park three miles by south from Whitchurch. Newport dwelleth at a place called Archall. It standeth betwixt Roden and Turn rivers towards their mouths. Sir John Talbot dwelleth the sixteen miles from Shrewsbury in the way to London, called Hampton Village. His house standeth in a park called Pepper Hill. The head house of the Charltons is now at Apley, half a mile from Wellington Market, a mile from the Reekin Hills. Howbeit Charlton Castle seemeth in time past to have been the principal, there be diverse of the Charlton's gentlemen of Shropshire. Charlton of Charlton Castle married the heir of the Lord Powys and Grey, since Lord Powys married Charlton's heir. Arthur Newton hath almost made away all his lands. Yarn is made in certain places of Shropshire, and especially in the woods betwixt Belvoise and Wenlock. Coals be digged hard by Ombridge, where the priory was. Market towns in Staffordshire. Stafford. There is a free school for grammar in Stafford, made by Sir Thomas Country Parson of Ingestra by Haywood, and Sir Randall, a chantry priest of Stafford. Litchfield. Country and Randall made St. Said Steeple, a fair square tower, and the bells in Stafford Town. Newcastle and a line. The parish is at Stoke-on-Trent, a good mile off. The town useth to come to a chapel of St. Sunday by the castle. All the castle is down save one great tower. There was a house of black friars in the south side of the town. Burton-upon-Trent hath but one parish church and a chapel at the bridge end. Trent compasseth a great piece of the town. Many marblers working in alabaster. But Oxeter, one parish church, the men of the town useth grassing, for there be a wonderful pastures upon Dove. It longeth to the earldom of Lancaster. It is in the way to Derby from Stafford, and is nine mile east north east from Stafford. A free school founded by a priest, Thomas Allen. He founded another at Stone in the reign of Queen Mary. Tutbury, a small market. Woolnerhampton a very good market town. In it is a free school made by Sir Stephen Jenning, Mayor of London. Tamworth. The College of Windsor give the prebends of Woolnerhampton, and the Dean of Windsor is Dean there. Tettenhall, a village and a college about a mile from Woolnerhampton. Castles in Staffordshire. Stafford, not far from Stafford Town on the River of Sow. The castle or pretty pile of Careswell, three miles by north from Stone, a later priory of Shannon's, sometime belonging to the Montgomerics, now to the Gifford. Litchfield in old time had a castle. There is a causeway through the pool to the castle, and diverse bridges in the causeway. A water issueth by them through the causeway. The castle standeth in low ground, and it standeth as a mediamnis in the pool. The water whereof is in some part a quarter of a mile broad in some place, and in some less. Newcastle under line, so called of a brook running thereby, or of a hill or wood thereby so called. There cometh a brook out of the pool about the castle. It longed to the Duke of Lancaster. Brook running out of, words missing, pool, cometh by the town. Healy, a castle of the Lord Audley's, and a two miles off is Audley Village, whereby some think that it is called Healy Castle for Audley Castle. The tenants of Audley come to this castle. Tutbury Castle longing to the king now by the Duke of Lancaster. 
It was a four Ferrari's castle, Earl of Derby. Eccles Hall Castle, longing to the Bishop of Chester. There be a five great pools, a brook cometh through them, and thence issuing out. Stursley, or Stourton Castle, without fail is in Staffordshire, and I heard that there was a Lord Stourton, a baron of this Stourton. It is the King's. Pole lay at it by license, and there Cardinal Pole was born. Tamworth Castle upon Anchor River, longing to one of the Ferrars. Part of Tamworth Town standeth in Staffordshire, part in Warwick, but the castle whole without fail in Warwickshire. Not very far from Stone Priory appeareth the place where King Wolfus Castle or Manor Place was. This Berry Hill stood on a rock by a brookside. There appear great dikes and squared stones. It is a mile from stone toward the moorland. Dudley Castle hard on the borders of Worcestershire, but the castle self standeth in Staffordshire. Rivers in Staffordshire, Sow, word missing, and runneth by Stafford, per Canobian St. Tomai, a good mile off, by Shutborough, and at Haywood Bridge into Trent. Trent, a. I have the course of Trent in Newark. Dove. Pen fluviolus per pentrake and prope Stafford in Sao de Labitor. Churnet. B. I have perfectly the course of Churnet. Blythe flu springeth at Whitley Moor. It runneth by Draycott village, Tain village, and about at Oxeter goeth into Dove. Tame riseth. Per pontem tamensem. Hamesworth, Pargham, Ashton, Birmingham, Per Crudworth Bridge, Kinnisbury, Farsley, Pargham, Thamesworth, Et Apud Wicknor, Bridge in Trentham. Kinnisbury is a fair manor place, and a lordship of 140 lee. One Braysbridge is lord of it. It is in Warwickshire. Abbeys and priories in Staffordshire. There were diverse tombs of the lords of Stafford in Stone Priory, made of alabaster. The images that lay on them were after the suppression of the house, carried to the Frères Augustine in Ford Bridge, alias Stafford Green, Cis Flumen, and in this Frères hung a pedigree of the Staffords. St. John's, a free chapel on the green at Stafford, hard by Sow River. The grey Frères were at the other end of the town, Ultra Flumen. Mr. Streety of Litchfield told me that one Langton, Bishop of Litchfield, made the fair palace at Litchfield, and the close wall, and that he made Eccleshall Castle, Shuckborough Manor Place, and the palace by Stroud. This Langton was treasurer to Edward I. There is a chase ground in Staffordshire, having deer, called the Seven Hayes, lying betwixt Litchfield and Woolnerhampton. There is a pretty chase by Penkridge, of the Kings, where Littleton of Pillenhall is fostered by inheritance. Forest parks and chases in Staffordshire. The forest of Need Wood by Tutbury, and betwixt Tutbury and Lichfield, but the nearest part of it is a five miles from Lichfield. There long to Tutbury Honour, four parks. The Castle Hay, Hanbury, Barton, and the New Park. This forest is marvellously plenished with deer. Cannock Forest, a great thing, merely longing to the Bishopric of Lichfield. There is Budesert, his place and park. Budesert in Langdon Parish, and in this parish is a great piece of Cannock Forest, and Shuckborough, his place, where is a park now of red deer, is in the side of Cannock Wood. Shuckborough was once such boroughs, with the long beard, and he, as some say, gave it to the mitre of Lichfield. I know no certainty of this gift. Some call Shucksborough Haywood, because it standeth by it. There is a fair pool betwixt Cannock Wood and Shucksborough. There lie five fair pools by the castle of Eccleshall, and the park of Blore are two miles off in the same lordship, is a five or six miles about, and is the bishop's, and is full of wonderful fair wood. The chase of Sutton, five miles out of Lichfield, whereof part was in Stafford, and part in Warwickshire. It is now clean put down, and this is the place where Vesey, Bishop of Exeter, hath planted houses of stone and brick, and many good dwellers in them. One Mountford a knight, 
attended in Henry the Seventh times, had a manor place here called Sutton by Sutton Town. This Mountford had a house in Warwickshire called Coles Hill Hall, and a park that was given to Sir Simon Digby, lieutenant of the Tower of London. The limits of Staffordshire. The site of the shire and commodities of the soil. Seacoles at Weddersbury, a village of five miles from Lichfield by west-south-west. Walshall, a little market town in Staffordshire, a mile by north from Weddersbury. There be many smiths and bit-makers in the town. It longeth now to the king, and there is a park of that name scant half a mile from the town, in the way to Wolverhampton. At Walshall be pits of sea-coals, pits of lime that serve also south town, four miles off. There is also iron ore. Market towns in Chestershire. Chester upon Dee. Nantwich upon Weaver, fourteen miles be west from Chester. The parish church is impropriated to Cumbermere. Some say that Acton is the mother church. It is no market. Northwich upon Weaver, twelve miles from Chester. It hath but a chapel. The parish church is a mile off at Budworth, impropriated to Norton. Maxwell, hard on the edge under Maxwell Forest, and yet out of the forest, twenty-four miles northwest from Chester, toward Derbyshire. Congleton upon Dane, a twenty miles from Chester, plain east out of Chester, and six miles out of Northwich. Nutsford Market, eighteen miles by northeast. It hath but a chapel. The parish church is at Asbury, a mile off. Stoppard upon Mersey, a six miles from Manchester. The parish church is in the town. Mr. Waring is called there Baron of Stoppard, for one of the Warings of Chestershire married one Stoppard Baron of Stoppard daughter, and hereabout Henry the Fourth days. The ancient a house longing to Warings was Poynton, where he lieth now, for Stoppard Manor Place is decayed. At Poynton is a park. Poynton is in the middle way betwixt Stoppard and Maxwell Town, four miles from each. It is in Presbury Parish, in the which parish be diverse places of ancient gentlemen. Castles in Chestershire. Chester. Biston Castle, builded or re-edified by Ranulf, Earl of Chester. Halton Castle, builded by Randall, Earl of Chester. It standeth about the side of Mersey within a mile of his bank, and within a mile of Runcorn, now a poor townlet by a salt creek. Shotwick in Wirral. Look with the Chartley Castle, builded by Ranulf Earl of Chester, be in Chestershire. Chartley is in Staffordshire, and eight miles from Dulacress Abbey, and a five miles from Otoxeter Market. There is a mighty large park. The old castle is now in ruin, but old Earl Randall, as some say, lay in it when he builded Dulacress Abbey. This castle standeth a good flight shot from the building, and a goodly manor place that now is there as the principal house of the Ferrars, and came them to be similitude by marriage. There was a place of the Lord Audley's in Chestershire, betwixt Cumbermere and Nantwich, called Newhall Tower. It is now down. There be moats and fair water. Rivers in Chestershire. Deva, I have his course. Weaver, I have his course. Above Frodsham, Weaver by himself goeth to the sea. Davon, alias Dane, riseth in the hundred of Maxfield, where the forest is. The head of Dane is in the very border of Derbyshire and Maxwell Forest, and as it is said, about the head of this river be the limits of Chestershire, Staffordshire, and Derbyshire. After that, Dane cometh a three miles beneath the head. If rain come fast, it rageth on stones, though after it cometh from Congleton, it runneth on ground somewhat moorish. Abbeys and Priories in Chestershire. Right again Leopool, two miles over Mersey, was a priory of canons called Northton, now suppressed. Forests and chases and parks in Chestershire. The fair and large forest of Delamere, beside the which I remember none, and there is plenty of red deer and fallow. The whole forest of Maxwell, except it be a small speck, is in Chester. 
Notable Places of Gentlemen in Chestershire, in the south side of the Forest of Delamere. Sir John Down, alias Dane, dwelleth at Uckkenton, within three miles of Gunbury, a mile from Torpoli, a long paved village or thoroughfare, and three miles from Vale Royal. The first house of the Edgertons is at Edgerton in Malpas Parish. He hath also the manor of Oulton. The ancients of the Edgertons dwelleth now at Oulton, and Edgerton buildeth there now. The second of the house of the Starkies is at Darley, about a five miles from Northwich, a scant mile from Oulton, and a three miles from Vale Royal. The fruitfulness of the soil of Chestershire. Bunbury, a gentleman, not in, but hard by, Wirrell. Irene Breton married William Hanford, of Hanford heir, but she had a son afore by Sir John Stanley, bastard to Stanley, Bishop of Healy. Sir Richard Breton, a younger son to Sir Randall of Breton, married the only daughter of Wilkin Stanley, and heir to Sir Geoffrey Massey of Tatton Manor and Park. Mere of the Mere, two mile from Nutsford, a man of a hundred mark land. Lee of High Lee, the ancientest of the Lees of this country, a mile from Nutsford. Lee of Booth, half a mile from Nutsford, and hath a park. Lee of Adlington, a mile from Presby, a man of three hundred mark land. Leicester of Tabley, betwixt Northwich and Nutsford, a three miles from each. Leicester of, missing words, younger brother of, missing words, toast, his manor place, a man of a hundred mark land. Daniel of Tabley, a mile from Leicester. Booth of Dunham dwelleth at Dunham a three miles from Nutsford. It hath a fair park and is a mile from Altringham, a poor thing, where is a mere. Booth of Barton in Lancastershire is the ancientest. Booth Bishop of Hereford was of younger brother of Booth of Barton in Lancastershire. Davenport of Broom Hall, two miles from Stoppard by west, dwelleth at Broom Hall. He hath a two marks land. Davenport of Woodford, a two miles from Broom Hall. The best and first house of the Davenports is at Davenport, a great old house covered with lead on the ripe of Davon, three miles above Congleton. Davenport of Henbury cometh out of this house. Henbury Place is a two miles plain north from Maxfield. At Henbury is a great pool. This Davenport hath a piece of Beechton's land. Fitton of Gosworth had another piece. Fitton dwelleth at Gosworth now, but not part of Beechton lands. Sir Percy of Dutton, chiefest house, is in Dutton, at eight miles from Chester. Hatton, a fair place longing to Sir Percy of Dutton, about a four little miles from Chester. Bostock of Bostock in Henry the Seventh time, had a daughter and heir married to Sir John Salvage. Bostock was of a very ancientness in Chestershire and in Danham Parish, and both Bulkleys of this parish, and Lestwick also. The last Bulkley of Eton was Nepos. Venable's daughter was his wife, yet alive. Bulkley of Watcroft, a two mile from the north which now dwelling in Wales. William of Bulkley, Chief Justice of Chester, was setter up of Eton. Bulkley of Eton had some land afore he was justice. These two Bulkleys contend either to be the elder house of that name. The name rose by a lawyer. Bulkley of Wales is a man of far greater land than the other. Bulkley of Eton's stock came to a daughter, and Lestwich had her, but Sir Gull of Breton brought her to Eton. Edgerton, one of the younger brethren of Edgerton of Edgerton, dwelleth at Riddle within a half mile of Bulkley Hill, where the head of Weaver River is and near is a pool of a mile and more in length, and out of it issueth an arm, that some after goeth into weaver, and straight much increaseth it. This riddle hall, made of a poor old place, the fairest gentleman's house of all Chestershire, by Sir William Stanley, helper to King Henry the Seventh, and he was attainted, and riddle was given to Rafe Edgerton. There is a very large pi- missing word. Riddle longer to Daniel, that was servant to Sir W., missing word, Standall, and few men know what became of this D, missing word. Spursto hath a place a mile off, missing word, and a pool by it called Newpool. 
Bunbury College half a mile off. Sir Hugh Calvely made the College of Bunbury about Henry V's days. Sir Hugh Calvely and Sir Robert Knowles were companions and great men of war. Biston dwelleth at Biston, half a mile from Biston Castle. Davenport dwelleth a three dim from Biston, by east at a place called Calvely, having certain very high trees about his house, that men may see very far off. This Davenport is of less lands than the residue. Priestland dwelleth at Wardley in Bunbury Parish. It is a mile from Calvely. A mile and a half thence is Barbridge, and there renneth Bar Riveret, after coming into Weaver. Sir Randall Mannering dwelleth at Baddeley, a three miles from Nantwich by south-west, and hath a park and a mere called Badlemere. Starkey, the ancients of that stock, dwelleth at Wembury, a mile and a half from Cumbermere. There is a park full of marvellous fair wood, but no deer. About these two places is plenty of wood. Needham, a knight, dwelleth at Shenton, a four miles from Cumbermere by east. He hath builded a fair house. It is moated. Shenton is in Shropshire, and Sir John Needham was Chief Justice of Chester, much set up this name. Cranage Manor and Place in Chestershire, three miles from Middlewich, longeth to Needham of Shenton. The manors of Baddington, Bromold, and Austerson came to Sir Robert Needham that now liveth by his mother, one of three heirs of Sir John Brawnley. The second daughter was married to Gerald of Brynn in Lancastershire, and he hath Brawnley, the head house, and Winnington, both in Staffordshire, and other lordships beside. Harper of Rushall had the three, and with her the lordship of Cholmerston, two miles from Nantwich. Brawnley, the head house of Brawnley the knight in Staffordshire, in the great large parish of Eccleshall, where the Bishop of Chester Castle is. Sir John Oldford of Oldford, a mile from the Northwich. Foulchester, a four miles from Nantwich, south-east, hath a fair place, and a man of fair lands. He is a knight. John Ashley of Ashley, two mile out of Nutsford. Sir Henry Delves dwelleth a three miles east from Nantwich, and hath a fair house. Richard Leftwich of Leftwich. Calvely dwelleth at a manor place called Lee, five miles from Biston by south-west. The second house of the Breertons, where Sir Randall the late dwelled, is at Mallpass, a little Sunday market, having three streets all paved. His fair place is at the very end of the south street. Sir Randall erected a grammar school there and a hospital. Chumley dwelleth at Chumley Hall, a fair house having a little mere by it, a fair wood and a moss of firewood. It is in the midst of the way betwixt Malpas and Bunbury, three miles from each. The eldest house of the Breertons is Brewerton Hall, by the Middlewich, possessed now of Sir William Breerton. Minchel dwelleth at Minchel, a five miles west from the Middlewich. Venables, born of Kindreton, dwelleth at Kindreton by the Middlewich. Venables be ancient gentlemen. Stanley a knight, Poole a knight, Massey at Puddington. Market towns in Derbyshire, Derby, Orsworth, Bakewell, Ashburn in the Peak, Chesterfield in the Peak, Mansfield. Castles in Derbyshire, Duffold had a castle, Horston, Codnor, sometime longing to the Lord Greys, five miles by east from Horston. It is now all ruinous. Castle of the High Peak, longing to the King. Rivers in Derbyshire. Derwent riseth plain west a little above Blackwell, a market town. To Darley in the Peak, to Wensley Village, to Matlock Village, to Crumford Village, and through Crumford Bridge to Watstond Well Bridge, to Missing Word, Darley, Derby, Sola Ferry, five miles be land from Derby, where it goeth into Trent. Trent, Manifold. Amber riseth east of Chesterfield, and leave us two miles on the left hand unto us, to Winfield Village, and eight miles. To Amber Bridge, two miles. To Critch Chase, a wood, fast by where it runneth into Derwent. Why river good for trouts riseth in Derbyshire near St. Anne of Buxton's well, so to Bakewell a market town, to Haddon, and thereabout why cometh into Derwent. 
Egglesburn riseth in a rock in the parish of Orworth, thence to Idas a three miles, to Dofell Church a three miles, a little beyond Dofell Church, at a place Egglesburn mouth goeth into Derwent. Abbeys and Priories in Derbyshire, the limits of Derby, the fruitfulness of the Shire, forests and chases in the Shire, notable places of gentlemen, the limits of Lincolnshire, market towns in Keston, Stanford, Bourne, Deeping Market Church is dedicated to St. Goodlake, the church of the other Deeping is dedicated to St. James. A mile from Deeping Market is the ruin of a castle called Maxi, whereof some part standeth yet. It was by all likelihood the Lord Wake's house. Of late days it a parton to the Countess of Richmond, King Henry the Seventh, mother by the right of the missing words. Sleaford town nor market is of no price. The ornaments of it is the Bishop of Lincoln's castle and the late Lord Hoose's house. Kyme, the goodly house and park, is a three miles from Sleaford. Grantham. From Stamford to Grantham, all in Keston, and by meekly good plenty of wood, eighteen miles. From Stamford to Beechfield, a mean thoroughfare, twelve mile, much plain ground saving in the parts about Beechfield self. From Beechfield to Ancaster, a poor thoroughfare, all by plain and much heathy ground. From Ancaster to Lincoln, sixteen miles, all by like plain grounds in Keston. Here mark that all this heath or plain from Beechfield to Lincoln beareth the name of Ancaster. From Bourne in Keston, to go through by Holland to Boston, twenty miles all by low ground, and much marsh, and no wood in manor. Low Holland, Croyland, Quapalold, Vulgo Hoplode, High Holland, Town. Standeth hard on the river of Lindis. The great and chiefest part of the town is on the east side of the river, where is a fair market place and a cross with a square tower. The chief parish church was at St. John's, where yet is a church for the town. St. Botolph's was but a chapel to it, but now it is so risen and adorned that it is the chiefest of the town, and for a parish church the best and fairest of all Lincolnshire, and served so with singing, and that of cunning men as no parishes in all England. The society and brotherhood longing to this church hath caused this, and now much land longeth to this society. The steeple being quadrata turris, and a lantern on it, is both very high and fair, and a mark both by sea and land for all the quarters thereabout. There is a goodly font, whereof part is of white marble or of stone very like to it. There be three colleges of frères, Grey, Black, and Augustines. There is also an hospital for poor men, and in the town or near to it, the late Lord Hoose had a place with a stone tower. All the building of this side of the town is fair, and merchants deal in it, and a staple of wool is used there. There is a bridge of wood to come over Lindis into this part of the town, and a pile of stone set in the middle of the river, the stream whereof is sometimes as swift as it were an arrow. On the west side of Lindis is one long street, and on the same side is the White Frares. The main sea is six miles off Boston. Diverse good ships and other vessels ride there. The Lord Willoughby had a house at Hearsby, and a park of black deer, a two miles from Spilsby, where, as I hear say, he intendeth to build sumptuously. Spilsby, a mean market town, having houses most part thatched and some redded, in it is one meekly fair place, longing to one Hastings, a gentleman which came from Southfolk, where he hath land. This town is five miles east from Horn Castle, and about as much from the seaside as in the middle way, and it standeth on the edge of the middle marsh of Low Lindsay. Rivulus Practa Labitur, and many springs be about it, and the soil sandy. Alford, sixteen miles from Boston. Alford. Alford, a mean market town in Low Lindsay Marsh, a missing word, mile from the main sea. The town is all thatched and redded, and a brook cometh by it. There is good wheat and beans in most parishes of the Low Marsh in Lindsay, but little barley as in stiff clay ground. 
no wood in the low marsh of Lindsay. At Hutter's Marsh, four miles off, come ships in from the diverse places and discharge. Wainfleet, a pretty market standing on a creek near to the sea. To this town long small vessels. The school that Wainfleet, Bishop of Winchester, made there, and endowed with ten lee land, is the most notable thing of that town. Wainfleet, seven mile from Alford, toward Boston. Luth, race and market. Castor standeth on a cliff-side half a mile off from Ancombe River, and a four miles from Langford Bridge, and toward a six miles east from Spittle. There is a Saturday market, the town almost all thatched and in hominum memoria, often hurt with fire. There is a speaking of a fortress that hath some time been there, there cometh springs from the hills by Castra. Lawnford, Forsan Langford, Grimsby, Tattershall upon Bain River, and the Eye, or Ree, a great river, is about a mile off. It is pretty small market. It is a five miles from Horncastle, and three from Bardeney. Horncastle, as far as I can learn, is now most builded within the circuit of an old walled town, or some high castle, as appeareth from diverse ruins of a wall. It hath one fair parish church. Aluitur Barno Everino Chi Paolo Infra, Op Barnum. Dr. Thibbleby of the Queen's College hath lands about the old walls of Horn Castle. Waring riseth of diverse springs. Aliquot Passuum, Millibus Apopidum, Missing Word, Petit. Ponzibius Super Verinum Flu. The market is very good and quick. Occupiers in the town, Missing Word, Wood Hard. Missing word. Bullingbroke hath once a year a fair, but it hath no weekly market. The castle is meekly well maintained, and moated about having a drawbridge. Rivers and brooks in Lincolnshire. At Kelsthorpe or thereabout, as it were a three miles west from Louth, riseth a great brook there called Bain. So to Bornburg, Peraventure for Bainburg, a village of four miles off, thence to Horn Castle, a market town four miles off. All this way it runneth most by south. After to Tattershall, alias Tate's Hall, flat west it runneth. Tattershall is a market town five miles off Horncastle, and so to Dogdyke Ferry, about a mile, where it runneth into the Ree, alias Lindis, the which divideth Lindsay for Kesney. Lindis, it ebbeth and floweth within a little of Dogdyke Ferry, Lindsay lieth by east and Kesney by west. The beck or brook that runneth by the north side of the Abbey of Bardenay, and within a half-quarter of a mile lower, runneth into the great Ree of Lindis, is called Panton Beck. This beck riseth in high Lindsay, as Master West thinketh not very far from the quarters whereas the bane doth rise. Then to hills, a manor-place of Master Hansard, so to Panton, a village of five miles off. Thence to Ragby village about a two miles, whereof it is sometime called Ragby Beck. So to Bardney Abbey, a four miles, and then into the Ree. The monks hold opinion that the old abbey of Bardney was not in the very same place where the new is, but at a grange or dairy of theirs a mile off. Lude River, to Ludebrook village, to Lude alias Luth, the fair market town, a four miles by Lude Park. Thence to Grimbleby village, a mile, and to Saltfleet Creek, a four miles off, and so to the sea. Salt Creek is a havenet, and as the shore lieth, it is a six miles above Hutost Creek. Meetly good plenty of wood about Bardney, and Bardlings, Reesby, and Kirstead Abbeys. Dimmock dwelleth at Skrelsby, two miles from Horn Castle. Sir Christopher Willoughby's son and heir dwelleth now at Tupon Priory, and beside inheriteth part of the Lord Willoughby's lands. Coppledyke dwelleth at Harrington, two miles from Spilesby Market. Ashkew dwelleth about Thornton Curtis. Wimbish hath Nocton Park Priory, and is beside a man of great possessions and ancient. He married the Lord Tailby's sister. Littlebury at Stainsbury in Hay Worthingham. The Lord Borough dwelleth at Gainsborough. Gainsborough is his, and much land is about Sheffield in Axholm. 
Dallison a little of this side Axholm. Hennage at Hainton, where he is lord and patron. The old Hennage lands passed not a fifty pounds by the year. Hainton is within a three miles of race and market, and a seven miles from Horn Castle. Sir Thomas Hennage hath done much cost there, in translating and new building, with brick and abbey stone. Sandon dwelleth at Ashby, half a mile from Spilesby. Porter by Grantham. Harrington beside Ancaster. Billsby dwelleth by Billsby, within a mile of Markby Priory. Fitzwilliams and Mablethorpe by Sutton on the seaside. Hastings, missing word. Wigsby of three, missing word. Asterby in Billsby, a man of mean land. Tuthby of Thuthby by Alford. Gedney of Mavis Enderby, a mean gentleman. Quothering by Wainfleet. St. Paul, Misselden about Castor. Luddington, Turwith about Barton upon Humber. Turner, Sutton at Lincoln, Dimmock of Carlton by Lincoln, Massingbeard beside Wainfleet, Hall by Grantham, Wellaby at Hanstead, a little from Stixwall Priory, a man of fair lands. Doncaster, Wakefield. Wakefield upon Calder is a very quick market town, and meetly large, well served of flesh and fish, both from the sea and by rivers, whereof diverse be thereabout at hand so that all victual is a very good cheap there. A right honest man should fare well for two pence a meal. In the town is but one chief church. There is a chapel beside where was wont to be Anna Coreta in media urbe, unde et aliquando inventa fecunda. There is also a chapel of Our Lady on Calder Bridge, wont to be celebrated a peregrinis. A furrow length or more out of the town, be seen dykes and bullocks, and monticulous egestae terrae, indicium turis specularis, whereby appeareth that there hath been a castle. The Garines earls of Surrey, as I read, were once lords of this town. It standeth now all by clothing. The Duke of York, father to Edward the Fourth, was slain by Wakefield in battle. Bradford, a pretty quick market town, Dimidio auteo amplius minus. Watchfelder. It hath one parish church and a chapel of St. Siva. It standeth much by clothing, and is distant six miles from Halifax, and four miles from Christostal Abbey. There is a confluence in this town of three brooks. One riseth above Bulin Hall, so that the head is a mile dim from the town, and this at the town hath a bridge of one arch. Another riseth a two mile off, having a mill and a bridge of, missing word. The three riseth four miles of having, missing word. Bouleen Hall, sometime the Bouleens, now it longeth to Tempest. It standeth a mile, missing word, Bradford. Beverley. Beverley is a very large town, but I could not perceive that ever it was walled, though there be certain gates of stone portcullis for defence. In the town be a three parish churches, the minster where St. John, sometime Bishop of York, lieth and one chapel. There is also a house of grey frares, and another of black, and a house as a commandery of St. John's. There is a great gut cut from the town to the ripe of Hull River, whereby pretty vessels come thither. There cometh out of the bishop's park westward, thereby a little fresh brook to the town. To this town long many great and ancient privileges as to a sanctuary. The town hath in their commune seal the figure of a beaver. Bede calleth the place where Beverley is now, Silver de Rorum, Anglica Deerawold. Instead of the minster, there was in old time an abbey of monks and nuns, destroyed almost by the Danes. Brithung, St. John's deacon, was sometime abbot there, and is buried there. There is also buried St. Winwildus. Leeds, two miles lower than Crystal Abbey on Eyre River, is a pretty market, having one parish church reasonably well builded, and as large as Bradford, but not so quick as it. The town standeth most by clothing. Hull, Pickering, Tadcaster, Boroughbridge, Dolborough, York, Ketterick, Ripon, Richmond. End of section 1
Section two. Part nine of the itinerary of John Leland in or about the years fifteen thirty five to fifteen forty three. Edited by Lucy Toolman. Volume five. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For further information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. In Derbyshire, Bruscow, Briscut, a priory of Blake Shannon's of the foundation of the Earls of Derby, a mile from Latham, it standeth not very far from Dugills. Many of the line of the Earls of Derby lieth there. Holland, a priory of Blake Monks, a two miles from Wigan, the Wootons were founders there. Sawley stondeth on Calder River. Lancastershire containeth five little shires. West Derbyshire, alias Derbyshire. Leopold, alias Liverpool, a paved town, hath but a chapel. Walton, a four miles off, not far from the sea, is parish church. The king hath a castellet there, and the earl of Derby hath a stone house there. Irish merchants come much thither, as to a good haven. After that, Mersey Water coming toward Roncorn in Cheshire, lisseth among the commune people the name, and to Leopold, a five mile on the other side in Lancastershire, is called Roncorn Water. At Leopold is small custom paid that causeth merchants to resort. Good merchandise at Leopold, and much Irish yarn that Manchester men do buy there. Warrington upon Mersey in Chestershire, a paved town, one church, a Frere's Augustine at the bridge end. The town is of a pretty bigness. The parish church is at the tail of all the town. It is a better market than Manchester. Thelwall, sometime a haven at and little city, as it appeareth by the king's records. Now fishgarths mar the haven, and the old town now a poor village. It standeth a two miles upward from Warrington. Thelwall, so called, because it was walled about with great dot 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 lease, that is to dot 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 de logs or timber posts. Wigan, paved, as big as Warrington and better builded. There is one parish church amid the town, some merchants, some artificers, some farmers. Mr. Bradshaw hath a place called Haw, a mile from Wigan. He hath found much cannel like sea coal in his ground very profitable to him, and Gerard of Ince dwelleth in that parish. Winwick, a good benefice, a five mile off, and a three from Warrington. Ormkirk, a three miles or five miles from Leopold, and about a two miles from Latham, a parish church in the town, no river by it, but moss is off each side. Latham, most part of stone, the chiefest house of the earls of Derby, two miles from Ormskirk. Newton, on a brook called Golferdon, a little poor market, whereof Mr. Langton hath the name of his barony. Sir Percy Lee of Bradley hath his place at Bradley in a park, a two miles from Newton. Newton is a four miles from Morley Hall. Prescott, a little market having no notable water about it, a four mile from Mersey, up toward Leopold. Mr. Molyneux, a knight of great lands, a two miles from Prescott, dwelleth at a place called Crossdoff. Tuckstaff, a park of the king's hard by his house. Knowlessly, a park having a pretty house of the earls of Derby within a mile of Prescott. Sir William Norris dwelleth at a house called Speak, a two or three miles from Prescott, and thereabout from Flor. Eskir. Thomas Island dwelleth at Runcorn on Mersey River. Mr. Leland reckoneth Preston in Anderness to be a little shire, and so there be six shires or hundreds in Lancashire. West Derbyshire. Chateley Moor in Derbyshire is a three or four miles in breadth. Glassbroke River cometh within less than a mile of Morley Hall. There be twelve parish churches in Derbyshire, but they be large. Winwick Parsonage hath a park, and is a two or three miles from Warrington. Fleet and another brook or two cometh into Glazebrook, and Glazebrook goeth into Mersey. Douglas River coming by Wigan Market goeth into the sea by itself toward Latham. Chateley Moor, a six miles in length, 
some way brassed up within a mile of Morley Hall, and destroyed much ground with moss thereabout, and destroyed much fresh water fish thereabout, first corrupting with stinking water, Glazebrook, and so Glazebrook carried stinking water and moss into Mersey water, and Mersey corrupted, carried the rolling moss part to the shores of Wales, part to the Isle of Man, and some into Ireland. In the very top of Chape Moor, where the moss was highest and brake, is now a fair plain valley, as was in times past, and a rill runneth in it, and pieces of small trees be found in the bottom. Canal and coal pits in diverse parts of Derbyshire. The great mine of Canal is at Hoare two miles from Wigan. One Bradshaw dwelleth at Hoare. Martin Mere toward Latham is the greatest mere of Lancastershire, a four miles in length and a three in breadth. Salfordshire. Manchester. Bury on Irwell Water, four or five miles from Manchester, but a poor market. There is a ruin of a castle by the parish church in the town. It longered with the town some time to the Pilkingtons, now to the Earls of Derby. Pilkington had a place hard by Pilkington Park, three mile from Manchester. Bolton upon Moor Market, stundeth most by cottons and coarse yarn. Diverse villages in the moors about Bolton do make cottons. Neither the site nor ground about Bolton is so good as it is about Bury. They burn at Bolton some canal, but more sea coal of the which the pits be not far off. They burn turf also. Yarn in times past made at Orwick, a uh, dot 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 miles from Manchester. Yarn sometimes made about Bury, a market town on Irwell. Now, for lack of wood, the blow shops decay there. Wild boars, bulls, and falcons bred in times past at Blakely. Chorley. Market towns in Leelandshire. Chorley, a wonderful poor or rather no market. Croston, a three miles from Chorley, towards Latham, a six miles from Chorley. A poor or no market. There be about a seven or eight large parishes in Leelandshire. Darwent River cometh through a piece of Leelandshire. Darwent cometh by Mr. Langton's place, Baron of Newton by Warrington, a mile above Preston. Ribble riseth in Ribblesdale above Sawley Abbey, and so to Sawley, a four miles beneath Sawley, it receiveth Calder that cometh by Wally, and after receiveth another water called Oda. Wally, a ten miles from Preston, Sawley, a dot 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 miles or more. Blackburnshire, out of a chart of Merton College. The next river by sea moveth by Carlowell, backward on the same shore. There is a water made coming from Chiswick to the sea. The next to that coming to the sea is there called Esk. Next to that, Dodon, and betwixt them is set Millam. Next upward into Lancastershire is set the mouth of the river of Leven, then Kent River coming to the sea. After is set Ribble, and then Mercy Water. In another cart of Merton College, Bridport is set as middle way betwixt Weymouth and Lyme. Lelandus, at Bridport be made good daggers. Lancastershire, the head of Loon River, by all estimation, must be in Cotterine Hill, or not far for the root of it. Out of this hill riseth Yore, Saul, and Eden. Howbeit Mr. Moore of St. Catherine's Hall in Cambridge thus instructed me of Loon River. It riseth in a hill called Crawshaw, the which is in the edge of Richmondshire, and issueth out of three or four heads. He would it should be first called Loon in Dentdale, though the name of Dent seems to show otherwise. North from Dentdale is Garsdale, and through that runneth a water that after cometh into Sebar Vale, and there is also a water meeting with Garsdale water, and a little lower, in one stream, they go into Dentdale water, which he supposeth to be the stream that afterward is called Loon. Beside the waters afore it, receiveth at the foot of Sebar Valley, a great brook, the which cometh out of the north, betwixt Westmeerland and Richmondshire. This river runneth a seven miles, or it come to Dentdale foot, and hath received into his bottom, the waters aforesaid. 
from Dentdale Foot it entereth into Lansdale, peraventure so corruptly called for Loonsdale, and runneth in it a eight or nine miles southward, and in this dale is Kirkby, a very great and famous parish, a four miles from the foot of Dentdale. From Loonsdale, in whose foot is Hornby Castle, longing to the Lord Monteagle, half a mile from the Loon. From thence it runneth to Lancaster, set on the south side of Loon, corruptly spoken for Looncaster, eight miles off, whither it ebbeth and floweth. Some say that the north arm upward is principal stream of Loon, the which is not of estimation till it come into Loonsdale. The ruins of old walls about the bridge were only of the suppressed priory. Borough, now a village set in Loonsdale, is a six miles beneath the foot of Dentdale, hath been by likelihood some notable town. The ploughmen found there an earring, lapides quadratos, and many other strange things, and this place is much spoken of, of the inhabitants there. In West Milanshire is but one good market town called Kendale, otherwise, as I ween, Kirkby Kendal. It hath the name of the river called Kent, Unde et Kendale, sed emporium laneus panis syllabarimum. In the town is but one church. The circuit of the parish by the country adjacent hath many chapels, and diverse in the town self. About half a mile off on the east side of the town is on a hill a park longing to young Mr. Parr, the chiefest of that name and there is a place, as it were, a castle. Kent River is of a good depth, not well to be occupied with boats for rolling stones and other moles. It riseth of very many heads, be likelihood springing within the same shire, a seven or eight miles from Kentdale, where is a mere communely called Kenmore. A two miles about Kendale, they come to one good bottom, and so to Kentdale town that standeth on the west side of it. The head of Ken River, it riseth at Kenmore in a pool somewhat large about a mile in compass, and much fish in it. The place of the head and all the barony of Kendal is in Westmoreland, and keepeth sure courts at Appleby, and beside thither cometh all Westmoreland. Ken Nuage and Moor is at eight miles flat north from Kendal on the way to Perith, and there is a chapel longing as a part unto Kendale Parish. Kentmore Hall, Gilpin's House. The first part of the river descendeth in betwixt two hills. New bridge two miles lower of timber. Then to Barley, a small bridge of stone in Storley Hamlet, a mile lower. Thence two miles to Bowstone Bridge of Stone. Then to Burnside, a mile, where the Bellinghams dwell, and is of stone. Then to Kendall, a mile and a half lower, and runneth through Strammengate Bridge of Stone having eight or nine arches, and the parish church by east is touched with this river, and thence a quarter and more of a mile, it goeth to Netherbridge of stone of three or four arches, standing plain east toward York, and then four or five miles to Leavenbridge of stone, and then to dot dot dot, Kendale Gates, notable as ways but not defensible. Strickland Gate to Strickland Village northward, Strammengate, named of the bridge. Kirkgate, the greatest street lieth north and south. Pront River goeth into Ken River, a mile above Strammengate Bridge. There longeth about a thirty chapels and hamlets to the head church of Kendale. The parsonage was impropriate to St. Mary of York. The castle is by east half a quarter of a mile from the town. Appleby is the shire town, but now it is but a poor village, having a ruinous castle wherein the prisoners be kept. There is an old castle on the dot 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 side of Eden Water called Burg. About a dim from the castle is a village called Burgham, and there is a great pilgrimage to Our Lady. At Burgham is an old castle that the commune people there saith doth sink. About this Burgham ploughmen find in the fields many square stones tokens of old buildings. The castle is set in a strong place by reasons of rivers enclosing the country thereabout. There is a very great lake or mere whereof part is under the edge of Furnace Fells called Winnemere Wath, wherein a strange fish called a char 
not seen else there in the country as they say. About the borders of Westmorlandshire and Lancastershire be many dales, and in every one of them a brook giving its name to the dale. There is in Westmorland, as it is said, a famous stone as a limes of old time inscribed. Within a mile of Penrith, but in Westmorland, is a ruin as some suppose of a castle within a flight shot of Loda, and as much of Emot water, standing almost as a mediamnis betwixt them. The ruin is of some called the Round Table, and of some Arthur's Castle. A mile lower meeteth Loder and Emot at Burgham Castle. Market Towns in Durhamshire Dunholm, Aikland, Witchingham, the quick market of Darlington standing betwixt Tees and Weir, Stockton-upon-Tees, Walsingham-upon-Weir, almost in the middle way betwixt Stanhope and Aikland, Hartlepool, Castles in Durhamshire, Dunholm, Aikland, Prudhoe upon Tyne, Stockton upon Tees, Barnard's Castle, Lumley Castle not far from Chester, Abbeys and Priories in Durhamshire, Dunholm upon Weir River, Finkelow upon Weir, a cell of thirteen monks longing to Durham, Weirmouth, Jarrow. There was a priory not far from Darlington as I remember, about Tees River. The limits of Durhamshire, Tees River, Tyne River, until he receiveth Derwent water. Earl of Northumbra, Lord of the Honours of Cockermouth and Petworth, Lord Percy, Lucy, Lord Poynings, Fitzpain, Brian. Cockermouth came by Lucy, Petworth by gift of a king, Henry I. Fitzpain and Brian's lands came to Poynings, and by Poyning heir general all three to Percy. The Earl of Northumber, Castles and Manors. Cockermouth in Cumberland, a seven hundred lee by year. Annick, Workworth Castle, Langley and Prudhoe in Northumberland. Rothbury, Lordship on Cocket, a seven miles above Annick, where is such a town as Corbridge. Corbridge Lordship, where appear great tokens of buildings by square stones. Chatton Lordship upon Till, a mile from Chillingham. In Yorkshire, Seema, Hummanby, near Seema, Pocklington Market are two miles from Seema, Leakenfield, two miles from Beverley, Wrestel Castle, two miles from Howden Market, where the Bishop of Durham hath a fair palace, Catton, where is a park, as is almost of the lordships afore rehearsed, Spofford, a great village, are two miles from Otley upon Air River, Topcliffe on Swale, a goodly manor house in a park, Tadcaster and Healy, Lindley by Spofford, where Sir Thomas Johnson now is heir. He had in Kent a five hundred mark of Poyning's lands. In South Sax, Poyning's lordship, Petworth. Torrey Bryan in Somersetshire, that Master Kitson bought. The Lord Marquis of Exeter had much of his lands in Devonshire. He had castles in Wales, and was there a great Lord Marcher. Peraventure, Payne Castle by Wye was his for he bare the name of the Lord Fitzpain. He had some land in Suffolk and Cambridgeshire. He had Talachan, a castle about the mouth of Tay, coming from Kermadine. From Kerlul to Burg on the Sands, six miles. From Burg to Workington, twelve miles. From Workington to St. Bees, fourteen. From St. Bees to Furness by the sea coast, fourteen miles. From Furness to Lancaster, twelve miles, from Lancaster to Preston, twenty miles. Esk flulimes et Scotiae et Angliae, Litha de fluit in Escam. At Motel Lithel was a moated place of a gentleman called Sir Walter Sealaby, the which was killed there, and the place destroyed in King Edward the Third, when the Scots went to Durham, and their king was take by Copland at Durham on a hill thereby, where was many Scots buried. Bowness is at the point or plain of the river of Eden, where is a little poor steeple as a fortlet for a brunt, and it is on the hither side of the river of Eden, about a eight miles from Kerlul. About this Bowness is part of the picked wall, evidently remaining, and it may be supposed that it is called Bowness, as who should say the wall ye, or point, or end. Burg in the sand standeth a mile off from the hither bank of Eden, it is a village by the which remain the ruins of a great place, now clean desolated, 
where King Edward I died. Berg standeth from Bowness three miles, and four miles or five from Kerlul. Berg longed sometimes to the Morvilles. Here was a fifteen years ago the Lord Maxwell sore wounded, many slain and drowned in Eden. Missing words. At Drumburg, the Lord Dacre's father builded upon old ruins a pretty pile for defence of the country. Drumburg is almost in the midway betwixt Bowness and Burg. The stones of the picked wall were pulled down to build Dumburg, for the wall is very near it. Netherby is a seven miles north from Carlul, and Esk River runneth on the north side of it. There have been marvellous buildings, as appear by ruinous walls, and men alive have seen rings and staples in the walls, as it had been stays or holes for ships. On the one side of it is the baitable ground, so that it is as a limes, Angliae Escotiae. The ruins be now a three miles at the least from the flowing water of Solway Sands. The grass groweth now on the ruins of the walls. Rockcliffe, a pretty pile or castle of the Lord Dacres over Eden on the farther right, about a four mile from Carlul. The town of Cockermouth standeth on the river of Cocker, the which thwarteth over the town, and Coker runneth in Darwent, hard at the point of the castle of Cockermouth. The river of Darwent, after that he cometh to a straight course, casteth out an army of his abundant water, that maketh a pool or loch, called Ooze, and afterwards straiteth, and at the last cometh into Darwent, and so maketh an isle. Forests, the great forest of Englewood, the forest of Nickel, belonging to the Duke of Lancaster, the forest of Ennerdale, a thirty years ago not far from the chapel of the moor, the which is in Coombe Witton Parish in Gillisland, and standeth a six miles east from Carlisle, was found a grave, and therein bonis inusitatae magnitudinis. Within a quarter of a mile of Carlul, a twenty years ago, was take up pipes of an old conduit, whose head by likelihood, missing word, wall tipping castle. Unreadable text. The city of Carlul is in compass scant a mile, and is walled with a right fair and strong wall, ex lapide quadrato subrufo. In the wall be three gates, Boca Gate south, Caldu Gate west, and Richard Gate north. The castle being within the town is in some part as a closer of the wall. Leyland, the Irish men call Bale a town, and so peradventure did the old Scots. Thus might be said that the Lugubalia soundeth Lul town. In the city be two parish churches, of the which the one is in the body of the cathedral church, in the which be canons regulars, as else be in no cathedral church of England. The other is of St. Cuthbert. There is in the town a chapel of St. Alban, and also within the walls two houses of frares, black and grey. In digging to make new building in the town, often times hath been, and now are late, found diverse foundations of the old city, as pavements of streets, old arches of doors, coins, stones squared, painted pots, many hid in pots so old and moulded, that when it was strongly touched it went almost to moulder, as in, missing word, Glalby's house in, in digging for the squaring of his garden and orchard, the which standeth much south. The whole site of the town is sore changed, for whereas the streets were and great edifices, now be vacant and garden plots. The city of Kerlul standeth in the forest of Inglewood. The body of the cathedral church is of an older building than the choir, and it is as a filial derived from St. Oswald's fast by Pontfret. In the fields about Carlul, in ploughing hath be found diverse corn lines and other stones, well entailed for seals, and in other places of Cumberland, in ploughing hath be found bricks containing the prints of antique works. The length of Cumberland by the shore is from a water called Duddon, the which divideth Furnace Land from Cumberland, onto a little water, or mere, called Polt Ross, the which divideth the county of Northumberland on the east side from Cumberland. The breadth of Cumberland is from a water called Emot, that divideth on the south side on the one part Cumberland from Westmoreland, until he enter into the river of Eden, two miles from Penrith by east, 
and so on the east side of Eden to a brook called Cookburn Beck, the which divideth likewise Cumberland from Westmoreland, on to the river of Esk on the north side, the which divideth Cumberland from the baitable ground, until it come to the arm of the sea, the which divideth England from Scotland. Market towns in the Shire, Caerlul, Penrith, a market town by south, sixteen miles from Caerlul, where as a strong castle of the kings, and standeth on a little water by force cut out of Peteril. But Penrith standeth, notable, dim a mile from the river of Emot, and a mile from the town or castle of Burgham, that longeth to the Earl of Cumberland. In Penrith is one parish church and a grey frere's. Cockermouth, a market town, standing on the west side of Derwent River, four or five miles from the seashore, and twenty miles from Carlul. Also on the west side of Darwent is a pretty creek where our ships come to, whereas is a little pretty fisher town called Workington, and there is the chief house of Sir Thomas Culwin. On the east side of the isle, whereas the water of Darwent riseth, is a little poor market town called Keswick, and it is a mile from St. Herbert's Isle that Bede speaketh of. Diverse springs cometh out of Borrowdale, and so make a great loft that we call a pool, and therein be three isles. In the one is the head places of Mr. Radcliffe, another is called St. Herbert's Isle, where is a chapel. The third is Vicar Isle, full of trees like a wilderness. Abbeys or priories in Cumberland, the Shannons of Carlul, Weatherall, a cell of St. Mary's Abbey, three miles south-east above Carlul, above the river of Eden, on the same side of the river of Eden that Carlul doth. Lenacost, an abbey of Black Shannons, eight miles from Carlul, upon the north side of the river of Irthing. Home Coltrane, abbey of White Monks. St. Bees, in Copland, hard on the west sea, a cell longing to St. Mary Abbey of York, about twenty-six miles or more plain west. Calder Abbey of White Monks in Capeland, not very far from St. Bees, and near to Egremont Castle. At Kiley, Primis Annis, Henrici VIII, not far from Norham, in the lordship of the Bishop of Durham, was found, betwixt two stones, buckles of an arming girdle, tips and bars of the same of pure gold, a pommel and a cross, for a sword of gold buckles and tips of gold for spurs. Dr. Ruthall had some of them. Edgemont, missing word, miles by south from Cockermouth. It longeth to the Lord Fitzwalter. It standeth by the market town of Egremont. A Cockermouth, a good market town, a castle of the Earl of Northumberland, the which joineth hard to the town. Bow Castle longing to the king ten miles east from Carlule. Near about Bow Castle, alias Bell Castle, be found Britain bricks, with entailed work and portraitures, in the old foundations. From Bow Castle to Narwood, a fair castle of the Lord Dacres, four miles south from Narwood, eight miles from Carlule. Millam, a castle longing to Sir John Huddleston, standing on the river of Duddon, or Duddon Sands, upon a creek by the seaside, a sixty year ago fish was found there of an infinite greatness. High Head Castle, a six or seven miles from Caerlul by south. It standeth on Eve Beck. Kirk Oswald Castle, south southeast, twelve miles from Caerlul, and south from Nawad. It standeth almost on Eden. Penrith, a castle of the kings, by the town of Penrith, sixteen miles south from Caerlul, and five miles southwest from Kirkoswald. There cometh at Ingmer Meadow, out of Peteril, a gut to Penrith, and at Carlton, half a mile of it running into Emot, alias Amont. Strickland, Bishop of Carlule, did the cost to dig it. Greystoke Castle of the Lord Dacres, fourteen miles from Carlule south, and three miles west from Penrith. Rose, a castle of the bishops of Carlule, six miles from Carlule by southwest. Bishop Kite, made it very fresh. Ruins of castles desolated and towns. Remember to ask by the itinerary how the old town stood. In the forest of Inglewood, a six miles from Caerlul, appear ruins of a castle called Castle Lewin. These things following I learned of the vicar or person of Corbridge at Newcastle. Corbridge, about eleven miles from Newcastle, 
but to go to it the next way from Durham, it is not past the sixteen or eighteen miles. Corbridge is on the same ripe of Tyne that Newcastle is. The church of Corbridge is dedicate unto St. Andrew. The personage was once impropriate to the priory of Tynmouth, since by exchange to Caerlul. The town at this time is full meanly builded. The names of diverse streets that hath been there yet hath names, as old people there testify, and great tokens of old foundations be yet found there, and also Numismata Ro. The stone bridge that now is at Corbridge over Tyne is large, but it is set somewhat lower upon Tyne than the old bridge was. There be evident tokens yet seen where the old bridge was, and thereabout cometh down a pretty brook on the same side that the town is on, and hard by it, and goeth into Tyne. I think verily that this brook is called Corve, though the name be not well known there, and that the town beareth the name of it, Collus Flu. By this brook, as among the ruins of the old town, is a place called Colchester, where hath been a fortress or castle. The people there say that there dwelled in it one Jotun, who they fable to have been a giant. There is no bridge on the Tyne, as I remember, betwixt Newcastle and Corbridge. As far as I can perceive by the book of the life of St. Oswin, the martyr, Colbridge is always put there for Corbridge. There appear ruins of arches of a stone bridge over Tyne River at Missing Word Castle, longing to the Earl of Westmoreland, a three miles lower on the river than Corbridge. Chipchase Bridge of Missing Word on Tyne. Moanboucher was a man of fair lands in Northumberland, and Dr. Davell told me that the hospital in Newcastle hath yet lands of his gift. The Rudhams were men of fair lands in Northumberland about Till River, until one of them, having to wife one of the Humphreyville daughters, killed a man of name, and thereby lost the principal of six hundred mark lands by year, so that at this time Rudham of Northumberland is but a man of mean lands. Hasselrig of Northamptonshire hath about a fifty lee land in Northumberland and Eslington, where is a pretty pile, is Hasselrig's, and one of the Collinwoods dwelleth now in it, and hath the oversight of his lands. The river of Tame riseth the ten miles by south-west within the land, and cometh into Tyne about a mile above Gateshead, and not far beneath Ravensworth Castle. Tarsac Castle ruins in Northumberland, hard by North Tyne, long now to the Lord Borough. There was one of the Greys of Northumberland, a man of great brute in the time of Edward the Fourth that was suspect with the Queen of Scots of adultery, whereupon he being accused of a gentleman of Scotland, came with a band, as it is said, of a thousand men to Edingborough, and there cast down his glove to fight in the lists with his accuser. But he departed without fighting. Yet it was supposed that Grey was not accused thereof without a cause. The Herbertel's lands in Northumberland, that was a three hundred marks by the year, came of late days to two daughters, whereof one was married to Sir Thomas Percy, that was for treason hanged at Tyburn. The other was married to Fitton of Chestershire. Mr. Dr. Davell told me that the limes of the bishopric of Durham goeth beyond the mouth on Darwent, up upon Trent, even to the parish of Rytown. A pile or castellet at Bowes on Watling Street. The Davells came out of Normandy, and since they have been men of great possessions in the north parts of England but they came in Edward the second time, to decay and ruin, for the chief of the Davels that was Sir Lawson Davel and Sir Hugh Davel, both barons, as Mr. Dr. Davel saith, but sufficiently to me proved not, took Thomas Duke of Lancaster, and the barons' part against Edward the second, and Peter Gaveston, whereupon Davel's lands were attainted and sparkled, yet remained of the name four or five younger brethren, that after got mean lands, and one of them after in descent, consumed a hundred lee lands by the year in Nottinghamshire, in mere hawking and hunting. There yet remain mean gentlemen of the name. The principal land and habitation of the Davels was about Pontefract in Yorkshire. Much of the Gascoigne's land and the lands of Truwit, alias Turret, of Lincolnshire, long to the Davels. The name of the original house of the Davels yet remaineth in Normandy, about the parts as I have learned of Allanson. 
Roger Thornton, the great rich merchant of Newcastle in Edward the Fourth days, by whom the Lumley's lands were greatly augmented, as by marriage of his daughter and heir, builded St. Catherine's Chapel, the town hall, and a place for poor almsmen, by Sand Hill Gate a little lower than Newcastle Bridge, on the very ripe of Tyne, within the town of Newcastle. The isle and almost all the lands that the Lord Lumley hath in Yorkshire and Northumberland was this Thornton's. This Roger Thornton was the richest merchant that ever was dwelling in Newcastle. One John Ward, a rich merchant of Newcastle, made a maison dieu for twelve poor men and twelve poor women by the Augustine Frères in Newcastle. One Christopher Brigham, a merchant of Newcastle, made of late a little hospital by the Grey Frères in Newcastle. The walls of Newcastle were begun, as I have heard, in King Edward the first day. As I heard, by this occasion, a great rich man of Newcastle was taken prisoner by the Scots, out of the town self, as it is reported, whereupon he was ransomed for a great sum, and returning home he began to make a wall on the ripe of Tyne River, from Sandhill to Pandon Gate, and beyond that to the tower again the Augustine Frères. The residue of the merchants of the town, seeing this to ordinance of one man, set to their helping hands, and continued until the whole town was strongly about walled, and this work was finished in Edward the Third days, as I have heard. The strength and magnificence of the walling of this town far passeth all the walls of the cities of England and of most of the towns of Europa. Prior Castle of Durham, the last save one, builded the tower in Farn Island for defence out of the ground. There was a chapel and a poor house of four. There was a house of Shannons at Ovingham upon Tyne, again Prudhoe, on the other side of Tyne, a master and three Shannons sell to Hexham. Humphramville gave the parsonage of Ovingham to Hexham that they should find certain Shannons there. Morley of Morpeth was once Lord of Workworth Castle on Cocketmouth. Dr. Devell told me that Anthony de Beck builded or renewed Kensington, as he hath heard, and gave it to king or prince. He builded Durham Place in London. Missing text. Thence it goeth within a mile and less of Newcastle, and so crocketh upward toward Tynemouth. Dr. Davell told me that St. Nicholas Church in Newcastle standeth on the picked wall. Betwixt Thurwell and North Tyne, in the waste ground, standeth yet notable pieces of the wall, the which was made ex lapide quadrato, as it there appeareth yet. Look, whereas the ground is best inhabited through the wall, so there it lest appeareth by reason of buildings made of the stones of the wall. The wall on the farther side towards the picks was strongly diked. Beside the stone wall there appear yet in very many places vestigia muri sespititi. That was an arrow shot at this side, the stone wall. But that it was thoroughly made as the stone wall, was it doth not well appear there. From Bones to Burg about a four miles, from thence it goeth within half a mile of Kerlul, and less on the north side, and crosseth over Eden, a three quarters of a mile beneath Kerlul, and so to Terraby, a little village a mile from Kerlul, then through the barony of Linstock, and through Gillisland on the north side of the river of Arding, a quarter of a mile of the abbey of Lenacost, and then a three miles above Lenacost, it crosseth over Arding, then over the little brook of Poltross, the which divideth Gillisland in Cumberland from South Tyndale in Northumberland, then to a castle called Thurwell, standing on the same thence directly east through South Tyndale, not far from the great ruins of the castle of Carveran, the which be near Thurwell, and so over North Tyne then, directly east through the head of Northumberland. There is a fame that Oswald won the battle at Hazeldean, a two miles east from St. Oswald's Ash, and that Hazeldean is it that Bede calleth Havenfield, and men there about yet find small wood crosses in the ground. Northumberland, in South Tyndale, as in that is besaid Hexhamshire, except and yet as a part of South or South West Tyndale, is but one parish church, and that is called Holtwhistle. There be beside Aliquot Sacella, whereof one is not far from Wellington, and it is called Whitechapel. There lieth one of the holy Aidens, and other holy men in the churchyard by the chapel. 
In North Tyndale is but one parish church called Simonsburn. In it is Aliquot Sacella. Since I heard that Simonsburn is in South Tyndale, and that in North Tyndale is only Bellingham Chapel longing to Simonsburn. In Ridesdale be but three parish churches. The chiefest is Ellerstein, then Hallerstein, and Corsansid. To these parishes resort the wit-riding men, otherwise thieves of that English march. Reed riseth within three miles of the Scottish march. It riseth in the north, and cometh south-west through Ridesdale, and so into North Tyne Arm, a little lower than Bellingham, that standeth somewhat of North Tyne, and is a ten miles above Hexham. North Tyne riseth plain north, and runneth almost plain north, till he meeteth with South Tyne. Some hold opinion that at Holystone, or in the river of Coquette thereabout, were three thousand christened in one day, in Primitiva Ecclesia Sax. Cocket River, for a certain space of miles, divideth Cockdale from Ridesdale. Cocket cometh by Harbottle, a goodly castle, and thence to Lim Briggs, some time of stone now fallen. Thereabout was great building, but now desolation. Newcastle, a market town. Hexham, a market town. Morpeth, a market town, is twelve long miles from Newcastle. Wandsbeck, a pretty river, runneth through the side of the town. On the hither side of the river is the principal church of the town. On the same side is the fair castle standing upon a hill, longing with the town to the Lord Dacus of Gillsland. The town is long and meetly well builded, with low houses, the streets paved. It is far fairer town than Annick. A quarter of a mile out of the town on the hither side of Wansbeck was Newminster Abbey of White Monks, pleasant with water and very fair wood about it. Annick, market town. Bamborough, now no market town. Berwick, a market town. Castles in Northumberland. Newcastle. Chipchase, a pretty town and castle, hard on the east part of the arm of North Tyne, the which divideth Tyndale from Northumberland. For Tyndale, though it be as a part of Northumberland, yet it is as a part privileged within itself. Tymouth Abbey, some time used for a castle. Dalwell Castle, four miles from Tynemouth, and within a mile of the shore. Otterburn Castle, standing on Otter in Ridesdale, the which joineth hard upon North Tyndale. There be ruins of a castle longing to the Lord Borough at Midford, at the south side of Wansbeck, four miles above Morpeth. It was beaten down by the king, for once a Gilbert Middleton robbed a cardinal coming out of Scotland, and fled to his castle of Midford. Morpeth Castle standeth by Morpeth Town. It is set on a high hill, and about the hill is much wood. The town and castle belongeth to the Lord Dacres. It is well maintained. Witherington Castle longing to the Witheringtons, standeth within half a mile of the shore, somewhat as touching against Cockett Island. By it runneth a little brook on the north side, and there is a little village of the same name. The brook runneth into the sea by itself. Workworth Castle standeth on the south side of Cockett Water. It is well maintained and is large. It longed to the Earl of Northumberland. It standeth on a high hill, the which for the more part is included with the river, and is about a mile from the sea. There is a pretty town, and at the town end is a stone bridge with a tower on it. Beyond the bridge is Bamboroughshire. Annick Castle. Howick, a little pile longing to the, missing word, a mile from the shore. Dunstanborough, a two miles beyond Howick, hard on the sea shore. It standeth on a high stone rock. The castle is more than half a mile in compass, and there hath been great building in it. Thereby is a strong, Missing word. Betwixt Dunstanborough and Bamborough is Embleton, a mile from the shore, and a mile from Dunstanborough. Bamborough, sometime a huge and great castle, one of the strongest in those parts. Agerston, a tower upon the south side of Lindis River. Chillingham Castle, longing to Sir Edward Grey, whose wife was married to Sir Robert Heldicar. Ford Castle in Glindale upon the east side of Till. It is meetly strong, but in decay. Eatle Castle, standing on plain ground, hard on the east side of Till, 
longing to the Earl of Rutland. Eaton Castle longing to Sir Edward Grey, two miles lower on Till than Eatle. It standeth on the west side of Till. The Scots at Flodden Field beat it sore. Work Castle on the south side of Tweed, a pretty town there. Norham Castle on the same side. Berwick on the north side. Houses of religion in Northumberland. Bolton of Shannon's in Cokedale, which they call commonly Glindale. The Lord Rose was founder there. Holy Stone Nunnery in Ridsdale, betwixt Aden Bridge and Hexham. Hexham. Lamley, a nunnery on South Tyne. Brinkbourne Priory on Cocket. Blake Shannon's by most likelihoods of the Lyles Foundation, or the Felton's before the Lyles. Holy Island Monks. Bambra, a cell to St. Oswald. New Minster, Farm, Cocket, a cell to Tynemouth. Tynemouth. Blanchland, White Shannons in Northumberlandshire, for it standeth in the farther side of Derwent. From Derwent mouth to Wearmouth, the low country betwixt is called Wirrellshire. Part or most part of Chester is in Wirrell. Whereas the hospital is now of St. Edmund, at Gateshead in Wirrell was sometimes a monastery, as I have heard, and by likelihood the same that Bede speaketh of. Castles. Hutton, a fair castle in the midst of Northumberland, as in the breadth of it. It is a four or five miles north from Fenwick Pike, and this is the oldest house of the Swinburns. Wallington Castle, two miles east from Hutton. It is the chiefest house of the Fenwicks. Sir John Fenwick is now lord of it. Derwent. Fenis, a little river, cometh into Tyne on the south side, a mile above Newcastle. Tyne. Cone River cometh by Lanchester, or it come to Chester in the street. Lanchester is six miles west from Chester. Headley Brook meeteth at Chester, or thereabout, with Cone Water. Pont. Wansbeck. Cocket riseth in Ridesdale in a ground bearing ling and somewhat fenny. Alm. Rye. Bremish is the very water of Till, but at the head and a certain course it is called Bremish, and after loseth the name and is called Till. Conk, alias Cocket. Lo, Glyne riseth in Cheviot Hills, and so into Glyndale on to Newton Village, where is a tower. There is a little brook called Beaumont, coming out of Scotland, runneth into Glyne to Langton Village, nine miles off, where is a ruin of a tower a mile off. So to Copland village a mile, where the water breaketh into arms making islets. But soon after meeting, and so are two miles of this side Ford Castle, into Till. Till riseth in the hills of Cheviot, and so cometh into Glindale unto a castle called Chillingham Castle, a six miles from the Cheviot hills. So to Ford Castle, and eight miles off to Ethel Castle, on the bridge of stone down on the east side a mile, to Hetton Castle, on the west side of the till, a three miles and a half off. So to Twistlebridge, of stone one bow, but great and strong, where is a townlet and a tower a two miles off. So to Horncliffe, a little village on the east side, not half a mile off, and therein to Tweed. Horncliffe is half a mile above Norham. Tweed riseth in Tweeddale in Scotland, at a town, as I hear say, called Peeble, and so cometh through the forest of Etterick in Scotland, and so through Tyndale in Scotland, the people whereof rob sore and continually in Glindale and Bamburyshire, and at a little brook called Ride and Burn, the which parteth England and Scotland by east and west, and cometh into Tweed. The great stream of Tweed toucheth on the English ground, as a limes between Scotland and it. So to Carham a good mile off, a little village where is a cell of two Shannons of Kirkham in Yorkshire. At this Carham is a little tower of defence against the Scots. So to Work Castle, a mile off and more, a meekly strong fortress, to Cornhill, a little pile two miles off, against the which on the farther ripe in Scotland is Coldstream, a place of nuns. So to Norham Castle, where is also a meekly good town about a three miles off, so to Berwick, a six miles standing on the north side of Tweed a little. Thereby at the bridge on the south side of the water is Tweemouth, 
a suburb to the town, and thence. In Northumberland, as I hear say, be no forests except Cheviot Hills, where is much brushwood, and some oak, ground overgrown with ling, and some with moss. I have heard say that Cheviot Hill stretcheth twenty miles. There is great plenty of red deer and roebucks. The forest of Luffs is in Tynedale on the west side of North Tyne, even betwixt the Tyne's arms. Betwixt Newcastle and Tynemouth, little wood. Betwixt Newcastle and Morpeth, little wood ground. Between Morpeth and Annick, good plenty of wood in certain places and many parks. Twelve miles betwixt Newcastle and Morpeth, twelve long miles between Morpeth and Annick, twenty to Berwick. So from Newcastle to Berwick. Betwixt Annick and Berwick, little plenty of wood. From Newcastle to Hexham, a fourteen miles, and that way little wood, except at a few places. There they reckon not Hexham in Tyndale, but as a liberty by itself. It is the market of South Tyndale. The liberty of Hexham stretcheth the ten miles south-west one way. In Bamburghshire, part of Northumberland, is little or no wood. In Ridsdale, no plenty of wood. In Glindale, here and there, wood, and Cheviot serveth them well. But the great wood of Cheviot is spoiled now, and crooked old trees and shrubs remain. From Riddenborn, a long tweed to Berwick, almost no wood. They burn sea-coal that be digged at Morton, a little village in Glindale, a two mile from Berwick. Glendale goeth along on Tweed from Roddenburn to Tweedmouth standing in Glendale. Holy Islandshire containeth all along the shore from Agerston to Beale, and so along to Bamborough. End of the itinerary of John Leland in or about the years 1535 to 1543, part 9.